So I recently had a client reach out asking me about how to train the passive alert indication with their dogs. The subject is a prevalent one. I figured I would share my response to help you in your scent work nose work journey and tag on a few drills to demonstrate how I train stickiness with my German Shepherd dog while patterning a behavior hierarchy that reinforces odor obedience. Just remember one thing, don't kill the hunt drive. So stay tuned and I'll explain the prerequisites you should have down pat before shaping a passive alert, how I train one, and why it may be a good idea for you to wait to introduce this behavior. Let's get after it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Dingle Days. I'm Drya Dingle, the canine scent boss, and I'm fired up to share a few techniques to train the passive alert with your dog. Just so we're all on the same page, a passive alert is simply teaching your dog to do a behavior that's not destructive when they find odor. For example, something like sitting, lying down, or freezing in place. Just picture a pointer dog. In contrast, an active alert is more like what we've all experienced with our dogs. Whether you recognize it or not, it relies heavily on understanding the dog's body language and cues. Think barking, scratching, a rapid tail wag, the ear twitch, things like that. The handler must be very observant and read the signs appropriately. The tricky part is that even in a passive alert scenario, the handler's ability to read the dog is just as important. So note, in the beginning, we will only train the passive alert with a known high because in a trial environment, you also need to be able to recognize a false alert based on your dog's behavior. If you're practicing without reading your dog, you're not setting yourself up for long-term success. So let's jump into the tips and some example training drills. But real quick, this channel is all about my journey with my German Shepherd dog, Disney, as we walk through the basics of canine scent work, pet photography, and the best pet technology to complement your productive lifestyle. So if that sounds like something that interests you, consider subscribing. All right, back to the prerequisites. So the prerequisites are a foundation. You have to have a foundation with a hunt drive. You have to build value to odor and make sure that your dog has a real good understanding of problem solving. They have to have a problem solving ability. You need to have an ability to read your dog. You need to have easily known hides, okay? Now is not the time to do tricky things. Dogs must understand the target odor. They know why those awards are happening, so they train you. You must have a sense of timing as well with your reward system. So if you don't have that down pack, now is not the time to jump into the passive alert. Some tactical patience as well. Success right now is an approximation at this point. So you're gonna have to be able to build duration, build this behavior and proofing through distractions over time. More often than not, beginner handlers focus on the end goal rather than the foundational steps of understanding a dog's indication behaviors and start killing all the fun way too early. I mean, the hunt in and of itself is what's fun for your dog. Killing all the fun of the hunt with the passive alert is not something that we wanna do. We wanna show off to our friends sometimes, how cool our pups are with what essentially is an obedience behavior, but exercise some tactical patience to not take the fun or the drive out of the search. I often train this as a completely different activity. Hence, the dog understands that the indication in and of itself is a behavior. It is distinct from finding the odor. This goes back to the hierarchy of behaviors, okay? Odor is in of itself awesome, but giving me some duration is excellent. And not coming off that odor, even with a million distractions present, is unbelievable. Your dog needs to understand this and you need to consistently reinforce accordingly while shaping the desired end state. So how do you train this? Well, there's a couple of methods. One is shaping the behavior. So one method I see is using a combination of different drills to build the indication. I don't overemphasize any one technique because I want to ensure my dog understands what we're doing. Train this in multiple ways. The first is a couple of shaping techniques using a bit of a targeting and a jar-like container. You've probably seen this a couple of times. What I have here is some tongs and the scent of the birch is on this small pad. If your dog has a basic understanding of targeting, what you're going to do is just move the scent around in different places. Places. Once they actually get the hang of it, you can add the Q word. Then eventually we move on to the container and then continue the shaping exercise. The only issue with getting your dog to build value to order in this shape or fashion is that it requires a little bit of equipment, but you can get creative with this. This is just a method to teach it. So I'll demonstrate with my German Shepherd dog Disney. Search. Yes. Search. Yes. Good. Search. Yes. Good. Once your dog has gotten the hang of that type of searching, we're gonna introduce the container. Cause basically this is only to associate no matter with where you see the scent, I want you to find it. Just bring out that hunt drive in your dog. You can use this to slowly build duration. So you get your dog to have nose on target. You slowly delay that yes command until your dog stays on target for as long as you want. Now, for those of you trying to build duration with nose on target, this is a great exercise. You can just take a container with a hole cut out and you can slip the treat in there when your dog actually puts nose on target. And then you slowly build up that duration and delay as your dog gets more comfortable. In the beginning, let's just see if the dog naturally goes and does this and shapes this behavior himself. Search. Yes. Good. 
Search. Yes, good. So this is all just another drill to just, yes, good. See, he went in on his own. This is all just another drill to build value to odor. And really, if you wanna get your dog's nose on target, yes, this is a good way to start shaping that. And then you just start jackpotting him when his nose is in there. And then he's basically rewarding himself. Ooh, and then you just gotta work on your uh, treating through the small hole. But that's generally speaking how you work that. Another approach is to use intelligent disobedience. This method uses or calls for the handler to teach the dog to refuse to leave the odor no matter what we say. I wanna see my dog coming into the scent cone of the target odor, then ignoring all other stimuli to get to the source of the odor, and then staying there and communicating back to me where it is via a passive alert. This training is a very sticky method. I, as the handler, can use this as a secondary reinforcer for myself to know that my dog has found target odor. Even when I pull on the dog's leash and I try to bring my dog off, he just won't budge. Mentally, I know, boom. This must be the one. You can accomplish this by ceasing all motion when your dog leaves target odor and when the dog's nose is on odor. Reward with precision. Search. Yes. Good. Search. Yes. Good. Search. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Search. Yes. Good. <laughs> he loves that set. Search. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Okay, good job, buddy. Yes. Good. <laughs> good job. You just have to balance when you're delivering the reinforcer and when the dog is away from odor, offer low level punishment, i.e. freeze and don't do anything. Again, the dog is teaching you how to do the right thing. Scent work, most of all, is a dog-led activity. And another method you can use to train the passive alert is what I like to call focused attention. This last technique does not require much to execute and relies on a dog to get you to produce the response they want. Like shaping somewhat, but you have to be able to place the target odor on the ground and just wait for your dog to engage with it. Once they get nose on target, drop a treat for them to reward themselves. Most dogs will get the hang of this very, very quickly. I.e., every time I place my nose on target odor, a treat falls to the ground. You slowly start adding a tad bit of delay between nose on target and when the reward drops to the ground. And then you're slowly gonna be able to build duration. All right, so now that you know a few ways one might teach it, why might you wanna wait to place too much emphasis on the skill? Passive alert training can be a buzzkill. As a handler dog team, I've spent all this time building up drive, tenacity, search speed, and now I'm asking my dog to just go static. This training can often create frustrating behaviors in your dog, and it can also increase the possibility of false alerts. So you must build the early stages in your conditioning so you ensure success, or at least you build motivation so you're driving towards success. However much patience you think you need to train this, multiply that by infinity and surprise yourself. We need to build confidence in our dogs that specific behavior, i.e. find odor plus passive indication, equals huge payment. I just may have to wait a little longer and ignore anything else going on. If you want to work with us one-on-one -on -one after watching this video or some of our other scent work, nose work content, you may do so via our virtual private consultations. Just check the description for more information. And if that's not right for you, just click or tap the screen right here to watch another one from our scent work YouTube videos. Until next time, continue to get after it.